What do you have to be in life to be recording a review for Bermuda Syndrome early in the morning? Uh, no, I, I'm not going to click with today's generation of kids. You know, they, they, got, they got their anagrams and stuff, the way they're spelling things. What does TBH mean? I don't even know what that means. I know it means to be honest, but that doesn't make any sense. You shorten phrases because they're, they're, they're annoying to type over and over again. FYI, for your information. That would get annoying to type if you had to keep typing it. So you, you reduce it to FYI. See, I understand that. I understand this generation. But no, we've gotten even lazier because, to be honest, isn't even said that often. And when you got to say it, it's not that big of a deal to type. And I keep reading it as to be here. It's not to be here. To be here, I prefer the bus instead. That doesn't make any sense. But I read it like that anyway. I'm growing dumber. Because <laughs> I, uh, oh, yeah, the review. Bermuda Syndrome. Okay, now we're talking about relics. You want a forgotten fossil of the video game music industry? You're looking at one. It's got a fossil on it. This soundtrack was composed by Jorg Schweisser and performed by the Subway Orchestra. Don't know who they are? Don't worry. You will never hear of them again. Oh, that's, that's actually kind of sad. Uh, Bermuda Syndrome Symphony is based off of the music from an old PC point-and-click adventure game developed by Berlin-based studio Century Interactive. From what I've gathered, it's a game that harkens back to those old PC games. You know the ones. Where you play it, and every now and then weren't sure whether it was loading or had frozen completely. I, it, it is, is, it's, not, it's not moving. It is, it's not, it's, it's done. It's, it's frozen. It's not, it's not moving. It's not loading anymore. Or, it, or, or it would be, it would be doing the thing. It's not doing the thing. It's stuck. It's frozen. It's frozen. Oh my gosh! Thank you very much. After solving that impossible freaking puzzle that required me for the dinosaur to get near me just so I could push the button. Oh my gosh! And I died so many times. Oh my! And now it's worth it. I am now. I got to do it all over again. Thank you very much, Bermuda Sedge. Oh wait, no, it's 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 moving. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. It's still working. It's still going. All right. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Woo. Back in it. Back in the game. Back in the game. Which may sound terribly unfun and inconvenient, but you were too bold over to notice that by the extraordinary breakthrough that was human voiceovers. They're talking in the game. They're speaking like little tiny people from another realm. Look at them. Look at them go. They think they're people. Anyway, the game had some really nice artwork, but gave way to mixed reviews and fell into obscurity. To clarify, this soundtrack is not the actual score to the game. That was all done in MIDI. This is some of the music from the game played by an orchestra and expanded upon in certain areas. So just how is it? Is it any good? Well, let's take a gander at it, shall we? Shall we at least do that? Let's do that. Let's give it a moment in the spotlight, okay? The first piece actually isn't the main theme. They were saving that for track two, I guess. Our opening piece is Coral Sea, and it begins with a kind of synth that will remind anyone of any movie from the 1980s. It's as if the composer-conductor is stepping out of one musical realm, that of video games, and into another, while also establishing a tranquil but alien atmosphere. This piece is foreshadowing of the rest to come. The winds have a very ethnic and soothing role, and the brass has a broad and harsher one. It may not click altogether at first. I was really partial to just hearing the winds perform, and every time I felt like laying back to them, the horns came busting through like the Kool-Aid man through the wall of a recovering diabetic. It's a bit like Prokofiev's classical symphony, not in terms of sound or structure, but instrumentation. It's almost comical. That doesn't mean I hate it. Far from it, it's just the winds are so good they juxtapose with the heavier brass more than you would want to. I still really like this piece, and when it repeats everything a second time, as many game soundtracks are wanting to do, it actually manages to take you less aback and becomes something more pleasing. The main theme begins with an introduction straight out of Beethoven and Korsakov school of you better have your phone off openings. It quickly switches gear into something more in motion and peaceful. There's a little bit of repetition here, but when it happens, primarily when the flute takes over, we're gently led to a final minute that is simply pure bliss. 
This is the best part of the soundtrack for sure. It's funny, really. This is an adventure game where a fighter jet pilot accidentally exits World War and into another dimension where he falls in love with a sassy Amazon. Classic story. I hear it was Hemingway's alternate take on Farewell to Arms before it was scrapped. I don't know, I like this version better. Yet the whole soundtrack is much more atmospheric and restrained than you would think. Okay, so atmospheric may not sound too surprising, but the music is relatively calm throughout. Even when it gets loud, it's usually very upspirit and never very intense. Really, the soft moments are where the intensity lies. So delicate and transparent are its finer moments that you almost feel like you could dip your hand in it and swish it around like water in a pond. The same goes for something like track four, The Forgotten Realm. And yes, it has that build up and release that I love so much. I'm pretty much a sucker for it. It comes across a bit awkward though when they do it a second time within the same piece, but it at least has a nice conclusion. Track 3, Torkin's Last Secret, is pretty forgettable. It sounds nice, but it doesn't really go anywhere. It's a march that almost sounds like a satire of a biblical movie. Once it repeats, it's hard to be in any mood to want to listen to it again. Even the ending comes to flip out of nowhere, as if the conductor realized they were heading over the 30-minute time constraint they were given, and had a sudden, uh, uh and ran out of the room as the orchestra just improvised. Overall, this soundtrack repeats a lot. Most pieces that should only be two or three minutes are extended due to that repetition, but every piece at least has an ending, instead of fading off as the music continues to play. Hey, I'm not knocking it too much for that. I mean, this was a bonus CD for a game from the mid-90s. I'm not expecting any kind of miracles in music here, all right? The question is whether or not you'll like it. Well, I can't speak for you, but I haven't played the game or anything, and I enjoyed it, so I think that clearly says something about it. It seems to be the consensus that any piece of music that simply repeats is considered amateurish, but I don't think so. I mean, if you like the piece, why not listen to it again? It's more convenient than amateurish, come on. All that said, Bermuda Syndrome does tend to show its budget and limitations more than soundtracks that rely on the same tactic. And for that, it stumbles a bit. Some of the things you have said to me are quite rude. I'm really not sure about you. I suffer from colloquial American. A lot of people do. I'm so sorry, Jack. Still, I think the first two pieces are worth the standard asking price of any CD, and the other four tracks are mostly icing on the cake. If you like your adventure music with a higher than normal dose of romance and intimate calm, countered by proud bolstering horns, you'll love it. I guess I kind of ended this review on a sour note, and I don't wish to. I'm actually happy and grateful it exists, and at its absolute best, the music has a very endearing, smitten quality to it. I'm giving it three stars out of five, and my MVP pick is the main theme. If you're interested in buying the physical copy, well, you can't without the game. Like I said, it was a bonus CD with the game, so it's actually kind of rare. I mean, I only have it to begin with because I have a German copy of the game. I've seen people sell it with the game for 30 bucks or so, so if you can find it, I'd say it's definitely worth a purchase. Take it easy. <laughs>